So today's topic is about the deep brain stimulation. I am Vishnuvardhani Manohar, Assistant Professor, Come Neuroscience Technologist from the Department of Neuroscience Technology, Enapoya School of Allied Health Sciences, Enapoya deemed to be a university. The specific learning objectives that will be see that we will be seeing in this sessions. At the end of the session, student will be able to define what is deep brain stimulation. They uh, will have a small recall about the historical development of deep brain stimulations and we will be having a very short description about the principle of neurostimulations and discuss the basic setups and the target sites where the deep brain stimulations have been done and explain its clinical applications along with along we will be discussing about the advantages and disadvantages and also we will be uh, explaining about the candidate selection for uh, for how uh, the patient has to be selected uh, for a deep brain stimulation and we will be enumerating the risk factors and the complications of the deep brain stimulation. So the introduction where the definition of deep brain stimulation, it is a neurological procedure that involves implantation electrodes within marked specific brain regions to modulate neural activity. It is used to treat various neurological and psychiatric conditions. Where this deep brain stimulation, it is reversible, adjustable well, with interventions. It is considered as a form of brain and neuromodulations and the procedure with this involves an implantation of a pulse generator and an electrode in it. So, recalling the historical background here, right, in, right from the 1950s, where the early concept and the foundations were, there, were started, where the initial experiments were done on, on uh, brain stimulation for animals and the electrical impulses and their influence, behavior and motor functions were ch checked in the study. Next, in the 1970s and 1980s, exploration of electrical stimulation in the humans were done, where the first human trials using electrical brain stimulation of movement disorders were done. And in the 1987, first successful use of animals, where Dr. Lim Lewis Benabit performed the first successful deep brain stimulation procedure on a human patient with tremor. In the 1990s, FDA approval and early adoption were, was given and then DBS approved by the FDA for treating essential tumors in the essential tremors in the 1997 and Parkinson's disease in 2002. In the 2000s, ex expansion to the other disorders were, given, were done where continued research and clinical trials led to the expansion of DBS to other conditions like dystonia, OCD and depression. In in 2010, technological advantage, advances and further researches were done by development of new targets within the brain for psychiatric and neurological disorders. In 2020s, where, uh, and uh, till today, the current research and, and future directions hence were given and ongoing research into person, personalized DBS settings with novel stimulation patterns, electrode up, upgradations and potential applications for Alzheimer's diseases are being done. So the basic principle of neurostimulation is that deep uh, brain stimulation is essentially an extracellular stimulation where cathodal stimulation resulting in the depolarization and anodal stimulation causing the hyperpolarization and the depolarization. In the, uh, while, while doing a bipolar or monopolar stimulation in a deep brain stimulation, a monopolar stimulation uses one electrode contact as the active site with a pulse generator as the return path creating a border stimulation field. While in a bi bipolar stimulation which involves two contacts on the same electrode creating a more focused and a localized stimulation field. The stimulation parameters involving in, in the deep brain stimulations are stimulation frequency where the rate the, which electrical pulses are delivered where higher frequencies are common in treating for Parkinson's disease while the lower frequencies are made use for different effects depending upon the target site or an area or a disorder. But the typical range of frequency that, that is, used is used here is 1 hertz to 250 hertz. Where the pulse width, the duration of of each electrical impulse is the pulse width. The shorter the pulse can reduce side effects and conserve battery life while the longer widths may be more effective in some patients. Now the typical range uh, that is used here is 60 to 450 microseconds. While, while coming to the amplitude of, or the voltage or the current, the strength of the electrical stimulation or the crit, uh, is the dependent. 
critical for determining the extent of tissue valuation it is must be adjusted at for based on the effect while minimizing the effect where the typical all range used here is 1 to 10 volts the coming to the basic setup a basic over setup is needed at in an over in, in while doing a deep brain stimulation where the patient care anesthesiologist surgical assistant a proper ski screen with a surgical technician surgeon surgeon consult and training consult must all be there at in appropriate rate uh, with the mri and a ct scan the basic surgical procedure or uh, uh, the method starts with a frame based stereo taxis. A rigid frame is attached to the patient's head just before the surgery after the skin is anesthe anesthetized with local anesthetic. A brain imaging study is obtained within the frame in place. The image of the brain and frame are used to calculate the position of the desired brain target and guide instruments to that target with minimal trauma to the brain. And MRI, the second step is the MRI or CT scan are set up to map the areas of brain for placement of electrodes. The third is a skin insertion is made, a small drill holes are drilled in the skull for electrode insertion. This is the, this is the computer tomography of the patient fused in the MRI at done in the earlier date and the at least a fused magnetic resonance image which is done on the later age. The physiological mapping which is done using the magnetic resonance imaging that is the MRI. The second is the intraoperative microelectrode recording which is a neurophysiological localization of target site and the microstimulation or the macrostimulation with DPS electrodes. The fourth, the fourth step is a thin wire lead is implanted with electrodes at the tips into the, into the mapped areas of the brain. Fifth, a uh, a plastic cap is placed over the burr hole to hold the lead in place leaving the coil of wire underneath the cap. The sixth, a scalp with the insertion is closed with the sutures and bandages applied over it. The seventh, a neurotransmitter is placed underneath the skin near the collarbone. The pace where the neurotransmitter is a small pacemaker which consists of an electrode, lead wire and a pulse generator. And eight, and it Extension wire with the lead is attached to the neurostimulator and the neurostimulator attached to the lead wire containing to the electrode is placed in the stimulating position is switched on for stimulation. After continuous stimulation the target the based on the target site or on the or disease based. So the target regions for our deep brain stimulation uh, for the Parkinson disease is subthalamic nucleus is, which reduces the motor, st motor symptoms. In the, for the essential tremors, the ventral intermediate nucleus of the thalamus which decreases tremor severity. For dystonia, glo globus pallidus internus which relieves motor symptoms. In depression and OCD, various targets include the subcalosal cingulate gyrus and the ventral capsule or the ventral striatum. The advantages of DBS in Parkinson's disease where it is not a cure for Parkinson's disease while it is a treatment that helps relieve the motor symptoms of, of Parkinson's disease as well as some of the non-motor or the symptomatic therapy. Bilateral DBS is often required to improve, improvise gait although sometimes unilateral DBS has a marked effect on walking, smooths on and off fluctuations and improvises tremor, stiffness or the rigidity, bradykinesia or dyskinesia. Decreases medications, DBS site effect of therapy, the globus pallidus stimulation which will give us the red, uh, reduces tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, gait problems, dyskinesia while stimulating on the subthalamic nucleus which reduces tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, gait problems or the dyskinesia. So the ideal candidate selection for DBS where the age should be appropriate of 40 to 70 years of age with symptomatic for 5 to 10, 10 plus years or more, initial good responses to liver up, severe dyskinesia, marked on and off phenomena where minimal on time without out kinesia. Cognit intact realistic expectations adequate social support access to programming of stimulators final decision lies with the neurologist or the neurosurgeon for the deep brain stimulation based upon the uh, severity of the disease
with the risk associated with the surgery where commonly most of 25 per out of 100 25 percentage of the patient will have continuous headaches replacement of pulse generator will give risk uh, risk factors later in the intracranial bleeds it's an probe replacement then reposition of the probe infections due to the device complications wire replacement seizures or the risk of death which is very very less when comparing to the headache with the more complications where the advantages of dbs as where reversibility adjustability it is reversible it is adjustable it improvises the quality of life it will help to reduce the medications relatively it is a very safe procedure improvises the energy level of the patient while the disadvantages is that it is highly expensive and increased risk of infection due to the implantation of foreign objects the ongoing research in the day to day basis is that the novel targets which exploring new brain regions for different condition where, di where different areas can be stimulated and improved technologies where advances in electro design and stimulation techniques stimulation procedures us are being uh, researched and personalized medicine where tailoring the dbs to individual patient needs a genetic profile uh, finally the summary of the uh, deep brain stimulation it is a neurological procedure implanting the electrodes in the brain the mechanism is deliver electrical impulses to modulate abnormal neural activity the targets are stn and gpa in the parkinson disease and others are dif others are different for different condition and the components which includes uh, electrodes extension wire a pulse generator and neuro which is the neuro stimulator the benefits the reduces symptoms improvises the quality of life and it is reversible the risk is the potential complications which include infections bleeding hardware issues the these are the references for the deep brain stimulation thank you